I ask you something? What is it? Take your brother back home. Generational sins began when uh, Spencer Fulmer uh, first moved to LA and we wanted to work together and we came up with this idea about uh, a road trip movie about two brothers who are estranged. We wanted to make it as real as possible, hence a lot of the dialogue, hence a lot of the realistic nature about how one deals with regret or loss or sadness. Generational Sins, it's about two brothers who return home to reconcile with an alcoholic and abusive father. This is a story that we know will resonate with many people. It is a very human story. It's a story that too many people can relate to. Well, the story itself is, is a very, uh, you know, uh, common story. Uh, it's not uh, an experience that's unique to uh, only a few people in the world. We have been surprised at the number of people who have come forward since we created this film and confessed to us that they've had experiences with child abuse as a, as a young person. I've been stunned by the number of people, honestly. I, I didn't think that uh, it was as common as it seems. And yet it's also a story about hope, about redemption, about finding reconciliation in a relationship that you may have found or that you may have thought could never be reconciled. It's not at all what I expected, and I and I I was happy to go on the on, on the trek. I had no idea this was a Christian film. Granted, I I wasn't raised in a church. I was baptized, but something about shooting that movie where we were and the people and the weather and the um, just the way it all happened. I left Pennsylvania, and I had never believed in something greater in my whole life. Ended up having an empathy for, for faith and religion that I'd, I'd never had before. When I watched this film, I didn't see a faith-based film. I saw this as a story, and I think we all put in what we really wanted to put in. And if you want to call this a Christian film, fine. I have no qualms with that. I just want you to enjoy the ride. People paint this perfect, picture-perfect world that they're living when actually that's not the truth. Being honest and real and grounded in truth of living as a human being. And I hope other people start to create art like this. It makes me think twice about my faith and how I'm feeling. Look, it doesn't surprise me that uh, uh, non-church people, uh, people with little or no faith would embrace this movie because it is a movie that will still relate to them on a number of levels. This film has exceeded all of our wildest expectations and we are so thankful. Um, living in central Pennsylvania was um, peaceful. But it's a part of the world that I actually grew up in and there's something really beautiful about small town America. Every girl is Rachel. She's a strong female character and she's from a small town and she chose love and she was lucky enough that it got to be the man that she had spent most of her life with. Well, you know, the great thing is you can take all the courses in the universities and film schools and uh, think you know everything there is to know about making a movie, but the fact that is you probably don't know anything until you've actually made a movie. There was an atmosphere of we got to get this done, but we're going to have fun doing it. I think everyone was there to work, but you have to throw in some fun. <laughs> <laughs> we made this beautiful, soulful, emotional roller coaster of a film. See this film? It's it's controversial. It's it is real. It's gritty. It it is set in a part of the country that you've probably never been to. If I could do it all over again, I would. It isn't an easy road, and that's what we wanted to show with this film. The path to redemption often goes through the valley. But when you've been in the darkness for so long, and you can finally see the light, 
taste the light, it's warming glow. Makes it all work.